that we have as a country decided to govern our Mr. Speaker Mr. Speaker as a country we have decided to manage our politics in a certain way legally Mr. Speaker and I know Mr. Speaker that we did an amendment to the political parties act here and as alluded to by Honorable Ishungwa it may have been as acrimonious as possible but Mr. Speaker the law was passed the law was assented to. And some of our, their architects might be even in this house with us. But anyway, that's a story for another day, Mr. Speaker. The law was assented to, Mr. Speaker, and the law was passed. And the law was taken to the constitutional court by a private citizen. And the court affirmed that the law was enacted constitutionally, Mr. Speaker. Having said, Mr. Speaker, that, and numbers were raised here, and voting was done, and everything was done. But Mr. Speaker, the issue I want to raise here is that in governing our politics, we decided to have pre-election coalitions and post-election coalitions, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we are discussing here are members of parties that made a pre-election pre coalition agreement, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, that agreement was registered with the political parties registrar. And Mr. Speaker, when I finish my my presentation, I want to, to table that coalition agreement, Mr. Speaker, just with me here. And all those parties have signed, Mr. Speaker, through their signatures, Mr. Speaker, in a broad daylight, in a ceremony that was held at KICC, Mr. Speaker. Those who are saying it was at night, maybe that time they were campaigning somewhere. But the ceremony, Mr. Speaker, started at 9 a.m. in the morning and ended at 3 a.m. And we went to a rally in Jacaranda after that until 6 p.m., Mr. Speaker, 3 p.m. And all these parties, WIPA, Kenya African Union, KANU, National Rainbow Coalition, National uh, NAC Kenya, Mungano Party, this is Mandeleo Chap Chap, Mr. Speaker. It is, they have signed here with their secretary, Mr. Wilfred Siju Nyamu, Mr. Speaker, Democratic Action Party, Devolution, all of them signed here, Mr. Speaker. And I want to table this agreement, Mr. Speaker. And Ocheng Party, Mr. Speaker, MDG, signed here. And I know why he signed, Mr. Speaker, but that's a story for another day. Mr. Speaker, we must respect our laws, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you, yourself, you are a party leader, Mr. Speaker, before the election. And you decided on your own volition, you want to have, your party wants to have a pre-election coalition agreement with another coalition, Mr. Speaker. And those parties will have followed you suit, Mr. Speaker. You cannot, Mr. Speaker, break a marriage, just to pick from where Honorable Osoro left, you cannot engage in another marriage, Mr. Speaker, and marry another person before you divorce the first one, Mr. Speaker. And when you want to divorce, there is a divorce procedure to follow, Mr. Speaker. You must divorce procedurally, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what I want to say is that, Mr. Speaker, this pre-election coalition agreement is enforced, Mr. Speaker. It is registered. This country has left the era when coalition agreements used to be rubbish the way they want, Mr. Speaker. That is what made the Political Parties Act to bring provisions that make sure that coalition agreements are held against the people who sign for it, Mr. Speaker. You remember the MOUs that were signed in 2002, the MOUs that were signed. When the new constitution came, this parliament, in its own wisdom, passed the Political Parties Act and said that you have to redeposit the agreement with the registrar of political parties. If you want to exit this coalition agreement, there are exit clauses you have to follow. There are clauses that allow you to exit, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, more importantly, the parties that claim to have left this coalition, Mr. Speaker, have written to me as a Secretary General of uh, Azimio. They have petitions. They are saying after that they are going to the Constitutional Court to, to get an order to get out of the coalition, which is, that is the right route. If they knew they can walk in and walk out as they wish, why are they deciding to go to court? They should have just walked away like, like some who is in a supermarket, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is either, you know, when we came here, Mr. Speaker, we swore to uphold and defend the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. That is the oath of office we took. And the Constitution demands us to respect instruments of legal nature like this that you have committed to yourself to, Mr. Speaker. If you want to walk out of it the way you want, is that's your choice. But the fact of the matter is, 
This country will be governed by the rule of law. This country will be governed by the constitution, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, how do we have a mature democracy? Mr. Speaker, this presidential system that we are using to govern our country, we borrowed from the United States of America. Mr. Speaker, there are times when the president of the Republic of Kenya does not have the numbers in the Congress, but he does not cease being the president of that republic. They have a midterm elections where the president loses the Congress. Obama lost it in 2015, I think, but he did not cease being the president of the Republic of the United States of America. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't mean that for you to become president, you must have the numbers in parliament. No. Parliament is a separate arm of government. Mr. Speaker, you can still remain the president and you still don't have numbers in the National Assembly. Maybe you have the numbers in the Senate. That is how mature democracies operate, Mr. Speaker. This, you can, Mr. Speaker, you can get numbers in parliament through election. You cannot get members of parliament through poaching, Mr. Speaker. That's a fact of the matter. Mr. Speaker, by co Mr. Speaker, we want to categorically say on the floor of this house, the precedence we are going to set this parliament, in this parliament, this time, is going to be for posterity because we are going to have elections in 2027. A president might be elected who is going to have less numbers in the National Assembly. Then he, will, he wants to, be, to force people to accept that he's the majority party in parliament because he's the president. No. The presidential election is separate from the parliamentary election, Mr. Speaker. People can be elected in one party, in one coalition, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, let us not mutilate democracy on the floor of this house, Mr. Speaker. We must accept that the will of the people of Kenya, who elected the president as the president, must, res must be respected as the will of the people who gave certain coalition and certain party the majority in this house, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am being told that Azimio La Umoja, one party, has no leadership in this house. Their, their presidential candidate is in this house. The leader of the Kenya Kwanzaa is not in this house, Mr. Speaker. He's sitting in State House. He's the president. He's, the president. he's in State House. He's not in this house with us. So there is no requirement the leader of a coalition must be in this house, Mr. Speaker. The leader of the coalition can sit anywhere in town so long as his troops and his members of parliament are in this house, Mr. Speaker. You cannot then let us have the president here sitting with us, Mr. Speaker, as the leader of the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we don't want even ourselves as a Zimio La Umoja to be given a due advantage, Mr. Speaker. If we had less numbers, Mr. Speaker, the will of the people, these parties that joined a Zimio La Umoja One Kenya, Mr. Speaker, came knowing very well that they are in this coalition in their rightful state of mind, Mr. Speaker, and the, the people who elected them to this house knew very well that they are in that coalition, Mr. Speaker. It will be betrayal of the people who elected those people in the name of Azimio, Mr. Speaker, for them to come to Nairobi, for them to come to the, to, uh, to, to the parliament and change course, Mr. Speaker. That is not the democracy we want to, to, to advance in this country, Mr. Speaker. Let us have clean, let us have politics that follows the law, Mr. Speaker. Let us have politics that respects institutions, Mr. Speaker. 